Dieter, thanks for giving up uh, your time today to discuss the multi crew pilot's license, otherwise known as MPL. I uh, thought it was a great opportunity to ask some questions to the person who's largely known as the, uh, the godfather of MPL. Um, to kick off with, perhaps you give us some background to yourself. I mean, who is Dieter Harms? First of all, to clarify the, the godfather, this is, <laughs> they call me the father of MPL. Okay. So let's, <laughs> let's leave it there. Okay. Yeah, okay, Dieter Harms. I'm a Lufthansa breed. I started my career in 1963 in the pilot school in Bremen and then all my life Lufthansa. I was four and a half years co-pilot in those days. Airlines were growing fast and I became captain in 69. And then in, in 71, they asked me whether I would like to be a training captain. So this was the career. And then it went on and on and then I flew DC-10 those days. But it was all training, training, training. And by the way, maybe we will come to this point later. It started already in 85 when I was in charge of the pilot school, the MPL idea. For those who maybe don't know, what is the multi-crew pilot's license, MPL? If you ask me to say it in one sentence, it is more airline job oriented. It is not a standalone thing, as we all know. MPL is a mutual endeavor between an airline and a flight training organization. And this, this is the big difference, that we prepare the people for the job. And it is also called competency-based training. And the big difference between a competency-based training, MPL, and the hours-driven training or inventory-driven training is that after a certain amount of hours, if you then pass a check, you are ready. And in MPL, we develop competencies which a pilot needs to successfully handle an infinite number of unforeseen situations during his career. And isn't it true that this is the real challenge of modern civil aviation? The real challenge is to be prepared for the unforeseen, mm -hmm. like a river landing on the Hudson. But competency-based training is the solution to improve operational safety in aviation. No question. So perhaps you could expand on how uh, MPL is likely to coexist alongside the conventional uh, CPLIR training. If we do it correct, if we do it correct, I foresee that latest in 2020, the majority of airlines will recruit their pilots via competency-based tra ab initio training. Could we not bring competency-based training into conventional CPLIR training? Yes, 100 percent, 100 percent. This would be a huge endeavor. This is what I, I fully support this idea. If you do a CPL for a person who wants to become a professional pilot, he wants to be trained competency-based. So this would help. I do not know what the authorities would say. I have. But it is, it is a splendid idea. Can you explain to us how MPL is constructed? What are the phases of MPL? Let me just, let me just find whether I can, I can recall them by heart. Those are three technical and five, call it human factors based or non-technical. Mm -hmm. Also, this shows you what, what the important part is. It's the non-technical skills which are important. Okay, those non-technical skills are leadership and teamwork, communication, communication is an art, mm -hmm. workload management, decision making, those are four of them. Situation awareness? Situation awareness, number five, correct. And then we have three non-technical, which is application of procedures, manual flying and automation. Those are the eight core components, and those are broken down in so-called performance criteria or behavior indicators that the instructor is able to identify those. And now this leads me to the center or the core of a proper MPL, which is the assessment system. One of the characteristics, or characteristics of an MPL is a continuous assessment. So in the future, you do not anymore assess at the first place the outcome of a task, you assess the quality of the outcome of a task by the proper application of the competencies, which are now observable. So when you fail 
to be successful in, let's say, a stabilized approach. Then your instructor will not tell you anymore, this, this approach was not good because you were too fast and too high. He will tell the students which of the four competencies were not applied properly. And this leads me to what is threat and error management. Mm -hmm. Because this is, for me, a model, a very good model. Threat and error management is nothing else what a good pilot has done 50 years ago. What we do flying an airplane from A to B is a continuous threat and error management. And the eight core competencies are the tools or the elements of this super competency, which is threat and error management. So a flight from A to B is a continuous application of threat and error management. Sometimes, what is it, subconsciously, not unconsciously, subconsciously, you apply them sometimes, sometimes consciously. So this is the model, threat and error management, super competency, the elements are those eight, eight, eight competencies broken down to observable behavior indicators. You're describing a system whereby, as you say, we've harmonized the competencies, we've identified them, we measure them, yes. and we assess a pilot's capability against competency. Yes. Not ours, not, not ours, definite limits. Not, not ours, and if, if a pilot has in, let's say there is a training mission, there is a, a special task, and this pilot is not able to perform the task properly, then the instructor goes deeper, digs into the behavior, the behavior indicators of those eight competencies. And then he, he supplies the pilot to prepare for the next session in saying, what you did wrong is first of all, application of procedures, obviously. Secondly, your workload management was not very good because, and then you have a five stage or a six stage or a seven, seven uh, um, stage um, uh, performance grades Mm -hmm. which are def defined and then you have a, a complete tool for the pilot and this is what we mean when we say student-centered assessment system or grading system that the student can do something with what you tell him as an instructor not this was below standard this was well below standard what shall a student do first level which I want the students to reach is he is able to describe the task and describing a task is then explained in a word picture. What does it mean? And then the next step is applying. The next is consolidating. The next is master. And then there's always a nice word, word picture which tells the instructor what is meant in terms of application of the competencies. So this is student-centered in comparison to instructor-centered. So for me, there is no question. By the way, the CTC assessment system is student-centered. I hear uh, from a number of um, training managers in airlines at the moment who are considering MPL, um, a slightly polarized opinion in that they seem to buy into the idea that MPL is a good thing and yet struggle with the idea, the concept that we need 12 takeoffs and landings at base training. First of all, this is one of the points where ICAO and the Europeans have a different regulation. ICAO is requiring six okay. takeoff and landings. The Europeans, as always, wanted to make it a little bit more better or whatever, and then they ended up at 12. I think I don't tell you a secret when I tell you here that this was also a trade-off. So this is an EASA restriction, not an ICAO no, restriction? it is an EASA restriction. And it is not competency-based. It is 100% not competency-based. This is what everybody agrees. Could you explain what you mean by uh, the term clean or pure MPL? I'm 100% convinced that we should start as early as we can in an MPL course to train in the real environment, which is the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 ton um, multi-crew jet transport airplane and some MPLs use even in phase two which by the way this clean means you use this for after the end of phase one you forget your Cessna or your whatever and then you go into this 50 ton or whatever environment in a flight simulation training device 
and do not try to use small airplane anymore, like a, a twin propeller driven airplane, because it has nothing to do with the aerodynamic performance of a 50 ton. So why not? I mean, I know that there are a lot of people telling me that you need experience in the air. Okay, this is what we get. I'm absolutely convinced that you do not, it doesn't matter whether you have a twin engine experience in the air or, one, or a single engine, because the asymmetric behavior of a small propeller-driven airplane has nothing to do with the asymmetric behavior of an Airbus. So, and this is the reason why I call, I distinct, distinguish the clean MPL by saying everything which starts in synthetic devices, which are, which are the same than we need on the line, this is a clean MPL. Can you um, possibly give us a snapshot of where we are right now in the world with MPL? We have uh, 19 courses going on at the moment. 19 MPL cooperatives between uh, a training organization and an airline in 15 states. Mm -hmm. So there are some states who do more than one MPL, for instance, UK, yep. for instance, Germany. And uh, we have 50 states who have implemented the rules for MPL, but not everybody does it, but they are ready for it, 50 states. We have about, maybe of today, 1,850 student enrolled over the whole period when we started it, 2006, where the first MPL is starting. We have 1,850 students enrolled and we have roughly 350 graduates at the moment. There seems to be a reasonable amount of polarity around the world with regards to MPL. Um, some countries seem to have embraced it and been quite forward-thinking and other nations haven't. When I go to China or Brazil, they understand it earlier or, or faster than a robust rule-making area like FAA. It's, it's easier. China, for instance, does MPL. Not in a big number, but they do MPL. And I have the impression that this will, this will go. This will improve. We know that in the United States at the moment there is a big, what should I say? There's a turmoil for me going on in terms of regulations. As we all know, triggered by this uh, awful accident near New York in early 2009, there was, uh, it, it was taken over by the politicians, then the politicians asked the FAA to do something. For instance, the 1500 hours requirement for every pilot who flies commercial, which leads in the wrong direction. But it, it has a history. The United States of America or the FAA land is a ready entry pilot land. Just bluntly extended the requirement for flight hours without asking for their content is, for me, this is absolutely the wrong direction. It's a stone age. It's a step back in the stone age of training. And MPL and competency-based training, maybe they, they name it differently. I don't know and I don't care. Dieter, I've heard you describe the CTC program, the CTC's MPL program, as being one of the leading programs in the world right now. Um, why is that? It is clearly following the idea of a competency push for training, including the assessment system. It assesses the student's performance along the application of the competencies. And this is what, and it is clean, isn't it? It's clean. Absolutely. Yeah. It starts in phase two, with a AT20 device. So this, this is a clean MPL. The instructors are very well trained and this is, this is the reason why, why it is one of the best. Cost control in the airline world is all important right now. Uh, many airline managers will be uh, wondering whether or not MPL is um, more expensive, less expensive. Uh, does it take longer? Is it shorter than conventional CPLAR training? Let's start off with a clear statement. It is, it is not quicker and it's not cheaper. It is only better, but a mature MPL down the road, when we have, when we have, let me let me say, an airline and, an, and, an, and an, uh, a training provider has done three, four, five MPL courses. One of the big advantages is you have always feedback from all this data 
to your norm. So you, you always make the norm more reliable. The more reliable the norm is, the better is the training, if you have the right selection. Dieter, thank you very much for your time today. Much appreciated, thank you. Great pleasure.